Although I think we overemphasize world records, there is something special about completing a run faster than anyone else. With how competitive speedrunning has become, people have set some pretty crazy records. These are my top 10 world record speedruns. Less than two weeks ago, Girtano was able to skip the barrier in the Wind Waker HD using a glitch called item sliding. On his display, he had data showing his exact angle, position, and speed. Using this data, a setup was created, meaning for the first time, barrier skip was humanly viable in speedruns. Oh my god! Oh my god! No! Linksys was the first one to finish a run with barrier skip, setting both the any% percent and all dungeons record. This was perhaps the most sought after skip in speedrunning, so the fact that this is the first run to use it makes it pretty important. I think, come on, this- YES! Okay, we got it. Alright. GG. 258.23. There it is. New Windbaker HD, any percent record, and Windbaker HD, all dungeons were record. 2 and 1. There it is. Doom had one of the earliest speedrun communities. Like GoldenEye, its popularity and in game timer made it an obvious speed game. In 1998, Panther set the record for the very first mission, beating it in 9 seconds. On the outside, this run doesn't seem super impressive because of how short it is. However, it's now been almost 19 years since this record was set, and no one has even submitted an equal time. Okay, everyone knows Ryan Lockwood's famous Agent Streets 112 run for his great reaction. But there was a reason why he was so excited because this run really is insane. Mark Rusu was the only person with a 112 at the time and is still one of the best GoldenEye runners of all time. He really didn't do anything else, basically all he did was speedrun GoldenEye. Ryan Lockwood on the other hand was certainly a good player but he was never in that top tier of insane GoldenEye runners. Here's a comparison between Lockwood and Rutsu's best times. Lockwood's faster times are in purple, levels where they're tied are in light gray, and Rutsu's faster times are in dark gray. Ryan Lockwood simply wasn't good enough to get a 112. Me and Mark Rutsu! Me and fucking Mark Rutsu! That's fucking right, I skipped 113, I'm a fucking legend! Right in the fucking head! Yeah! The double. Body armor. Two quick ones, I already know I'm getting there on the perfect line. I'm a fucking legend! A tool-assisted speedrun is made by entering individual inputs frame by frame to create a theoretical perfect run. The portal task by Jukespot in 5 minutes 13 seconds is my personal favorite. There's a really cool video he made where he goes through and explains everything in the run. Not many people have seen it, I'll put a link in the description. Between the easy clipping and abuse of portals, this task really shows how much you can break a game. Me. Worst through his run of Pokemon Yellow in 1 hour 59 minutes in game time was ridiculous. All the movement, all the battles were nearly perfect. Running a Pokemon game is a lot different than a normal speedrun. It's not just about learning and memorizing a route, but knowing every possible situation that can occur and how to react. Where other speedruns are heavily execution based, Pokemon is more luck and reactionary based. We'll fight this first rival fight. He's just got like the worst attack. Like his lead has growl. Obviously lowers your attack, means you're doing less damage, more turns, waste time. Then his sand true has high defense and sand attack. And his Eevee also has sand attack. And if you've played these games, you know how bad sand attack is. Okay, so sand true comes out. This is the one I'm really worried about. Like, I'm sweating on sand attack really bad. That crit? Ooh. <laughs> that was nice. Oh like, man, that was insane. gorgeous know how good this run's been, I'm just hoping for 159, I want that sub 2 so bad. And then, like, when it comes up, just, okay, I, I cannot explain, like, okay, just imagine the biggest dick you've ever seen. Like, <laughs> my dick was just three times that size when I saw 159, look oh at that my fucking God. shit, holy shit, that run was so good. That's amazing. In 2006, a Japanese runner named Hoda Ruby submitted a Super Metroid run to Speed Demo's archive. At the time, they used in-game time, so Hoda Ruby's run was a 32. This beat the fastest proven time by a whole six minutes. 
This was one of the best runs anyone had ever seen. Multiple people questioned its validity because of how well everything was executed. Hoda Ruby was a runner ahead of his time. This is Menbu's Super Mario World run in 10 minutes 26 seconds. This run was so extremely good that no one could beat it until an entirely new glitch called the Cloud Glitch was discovered which drastically speeds up the Bowser fight. As has happened with many other games, Japan has sort of faded into the background in recent years. So because this was in 2013, this was actually one of Japan's more recent major records. うん、ゆったりしたお <laughs> 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 I know what you're asking, which century is this footage from? This is actually from 2011. I spoke briefly about Mark Rutsu earlier, this guy is quite the character. He poured such a stupid number of hours into Goldeneye and set some of the most insane records of all time. An untied world record in Goldeneye is a huge accomplishment, and a run so short and optimized it's very impressive to save that much time over everyone else. They usually don't stand for very long as once one person has done it, people have an easier time replicating it. However, Rutsu's 155 on Damn Double O Agent has now stood untied for over 7 years. Not only is it untied, but only one other player has ever gotten a 156, making this one of the best speedruns of all time. Unfortunately, this amazing feat was recorded in probably the worst quality possible. Super Mario Bros. is one of the most optimized games in history, not just for its short length, but because of the frame rule mechanic. The game is constantly checking to see if Mario has beaten the level, but only every 21 frames, which is about a third of a second in this game. Because of this mechanic, level to level you can only gain or lose time in increments of 21 frames. So because each level is so short, you don't have to play perfectly, just really well to reach the end of the level within the fastest frame rule. Because of this, every record pace run will enter 8-4 at the same time. Now there's a glitch you can do where Mario clips into the base of the flagpole and reaches the castle slightly faster, saving an extra frame rule. But this trick isn't just pixel perfect. For every pixel in the game there are 16 subpixels, and you need the right subpixel value for this trick to work. Sock Folder found a consistent way to manipulate your subpixel in the first level, meaning for the first time 456 was possible. Please, 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 please. That was it! That was it! That was it! That was it! Did I break the camera? I kinda broke the camera. That was it! I had a hard time putting this run at number one. There are runs that are more optimized, runs that are more complex, there are people who have worked harder to get a good time, but I decided Cosmos 1810 should top the list because of how much it meant to so many people. Everyone knew when he got 1810, everyone. It was ridiculous he saved that much time on a run already that optimized. Playing on the IQ gave him a huge time advantage over other players, but still, no one was even within 45 seconds in one of the most competitive games in one of the most competitive categories. This run even got Cosmo on CNN. In my opinion, this was the most important run of all time. Oh, fuck! It's over. Ocarina of Time is dead. Any percent is done. That's it.